Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of Isaiah chapter 58. Now before I dive into that particular passage, let me remind us that in the New Testament, especially in the book of, of, of uh, 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul tells us that the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, when he, when he speaks of that, I want to make very clear that he speaks of weapons in a plural way. There are more than one weapon of our warfare. Now, many times if you are challenged to find, to, and, and asked, what are the weapons of our warfare? How do we as Christians fight the battle? We're in the, in the midst of a militant world and we are to fight our battles uh, with the enemy and he will be uh, our enemy until either Jesus returns or until the day we die. On the other side, all of that will be gone. But for right now, we are the church militant. So what are those weapons? Most people would immediately say prayer, and I wouldn't disagree. But beyond that, many in our society have little to say as to what other weapons we use to fight. But here in Isaiah 58, we see another weapon that was that the, early, uh, that the uh, ancient Jews were very conscious of. And in fact, it was employed often in the early church, although uh, not spoken of a lot, uh, but there were references to that in several different places. And I'm speaking of the discipline of fasting. This particular discipline is not a work of righteousness like some like to suggest. It is not a way of twisting God's arm into doing our will. But the ancients did note that when they fasted and when they carried their request to God with, uh, with a fast, that he seemed to answer in a greater way. He seemed to answer more quickly. And that's why here in Isaiah 58, it says here in verse 4, fasting like yours today will not make your voice to be heard on high. Now, I know that's written in the negative, but the understanding of people at that time was that that's what fasting did. It made your voice heard on high. It expressed to God the, the, the depth of your passion for whatever it was that you were praying for, and God would answer as a result of that. Now he goes on, Isaiah does, and he says, Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? And then he goes on and he says, then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily. There are people today who spend time fasting, not as a work of righteousness before God. They're not saying, Lord, look at me, how, I'm, how wonderful I am to fast. But, but they recognize that this appeal to God that they're making can be amplified through fasting. One of the illustrations that I've used in the past, and maybe I've spoken of it here on the video blog, but uh, if you were to take a magnifying glass, I remember as kids we used to do this, go out into a field on a, on a sunny day and take your magnifying glass and focus the rays of the sun on a piece of dead grass or a, or a twig, and you will begin to see after a few moments that the intensity of that light will ignite into fire that, uh, that dead uh, twig or that dead grass that you might be um, focused on. You see, that's what fasting does. Is there anything qualitatively different about fasting than there is about prayer? No, I wouldn't say that there is. But what fasting does is to intensify 
that. And, and that's why it, he, um, he hears us on high and our voices seem to have more uh, authority in and before him. Now, Jesus warns us in the Sermon on the Mount, of course, that when you give and when you pray and when you fast, not to do it in a way that exposes uh, yourself to all kinds of people, but to do it privately. And, these, and this is very important that we do that. But I wanna to suggest to us again that fasting is indeed a valid means of grace to us today. And if there are burdens that are on your heart, if there are concerns that weigh you down and oppress your spirit, and you've let, you have let God know about them again and again and again, try fasting, not as a work of righteousness, but as an appeal to God to intensify that prayer. Father, I ask you to grant to us the grace that we need to make our voices heard on high. Not because we, we follow some prescription, but help us, Father, to recognize the importance of, of intensifying our prayers before you. Grant to us that grace. And we pray, Father, excuse me, that you would hear and answer from heaven. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Hope you have a great day.